Well, we are joined now to discuss this by the Conservative MP Jacob Rees-Mogg and by Lord Matt Ridley, who writes about science. Welcome to both of you. Um, Jacob Rees-Mogg, why would you want to prevent families having healthy babies free of this particular genetic flaw? The difficulty is that once you have accepted that you are willing to interfere with the genes of a baby, you have passed over a line that society has been very reluctant to pass. You are entering into the field of eugenics, and that seems to me to be a very risky thing to do. And it's not a cure for a disease, it is the creation of a different person. And I think it's important to remember you're not making an existing child better, you are creating a different child. And that, I think, raises serious ethical questions. What do you say to that, Matt Ridley? Well, of course, we're already doing that with in vitro fertilization and with pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, where we're taking different embryos and deciding which one to, to, to implant because it's healthier. Uh, and if you come up with a technique that enables you to alleviate some of the suffering these families have, and there is genuine suffering because it's the parents who suffer mm. for, for not being able to have their own children, uh, uh, if you come up with a technique to do that, you've got to have a very good reason, I think, to say we want to ban this. We don't want to let the families have the choice of it. It's really about giving the choice to the families. Uh, and the reasons we've heard so far are not very good ones. They're old-fashioned, slippery slope arguments that we heard for IVF, we heard for organ, organ donation even, we heard for pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, and it just isn't true. People aren't that interested in eugenics. They don't want to have super babies. They want to have their own babies. But would this actually create a super baby anyway? No, indeed. It's just 37 extra mm. genes. They're, they're within a particular thing called the mitochondrion. They never leave it, so that they don't affect personality or anything like that. Uh, it's just a matter of trying to enable people not to have diseased children. Right. I mean, your point about crossing the line, if that line has already been crossed um, because we already have procedures to help people who aren't able to have babies naturally, then what else is influencing your thinking here? This is a fundamentally different line, uh, and that the 37 genes that are being changed... 0.1%. Absolutely. have it's a tiny. It might be small, but it has a fundamental impact, clearly, on the child. That's why it's being advocated, because of its importance that the, these 37 genes absolutely and clearly change the person who is born. And that, I think, is fundamentally different from curing somebody of an illness or you could say uh, you change the genetics of a child by who people want to marry, and that's the earlier stage that Lord Ridley is talking about. And I'm talking about actually taking out one set of genes and putting them in from somebody else, and that is genetic engineering of babies. And I think that's really a very important step to be taking, and I accept that the slippery slope argument is one that is often misused. But there's a very clear line to say that you will not change the genetics of babies. Once you've crossed that, at what point do you say we mustn't have this genetic intervention? Because this is a very specific move, isn't it, with a very, as you say, tiny proportion of DNA being implanted to avoid this faulty mitochondria, um, perhaps even killing a child further down the line. But do you accept it is messing with genetics? Well, yes, you are certainly changing genes, but then you're, 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 you're doing that uh, with, as I say, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, etc. But, in a way, this kind of elevates DNA to a, to a more important role than it has. I mean, uh, these genes are in this mitochondrion because it's a descended from a separate uh, bacterium hundreds of millions of years ago. We have separate bacteria in our gut. They have genes. We don't mind changing them, etc. So I do think that the nuclear DNA is very different. That's the DNA, which is 99.9% mm. .9 of our DNA. It's the one that decides our, everything about us. Uh, th this is just about running the mitochondria. So you're not changing the characteristics of, of a person in that sense, because it isn't, as Matt Ridley said, the, the core, the nucleus, if you like, of, of the DNA of a third person. It is literally replacing what could be faulty um, DNA, you are not changing who that person could be. That, that can't follow, that the importance of changing these genes is that the baby that is born is fundamentally different. And it's worth bearing in mind that about one in 200 babies uh, born are born with a mitochondrial disorder. And are you going to change all of those for these perfect babies? I, I think what? we have to be very careful about, about changing the genes and that I, I think once you've started, you will soon be able to extend the argument and say that there are other diseases 
and that it would be convenient to... Well, that is the super slow argument, isn't it? It is, isn't and it? I, I think as it's you, a strong one you, on this occasion. Right. Well, I mean, I, I, I respect Jacob's view on this, and I do think that, you know, we do need to be very careful, but we have shown that we can go down slippery slopes quite carefully. <laughs> in other words, we don't, just because we're on them, slide all the way to the bottom. Right. We decide on each step at, one at a time. And in this case, we've looked at the safety and efficacy and we've listened to the, the clinical need, the, the families who are driven desperate by the fact that, that they've had these children who, 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 are ter who suffer terribly before they die at the age of four and who say, actually, I'd rather have a healthy baby. Right. What about, though, the destruction of the embryo afterwards? Because an embryo is created and then destroyed once the uh, DNA taken out is, is used. Isn't that right? Well, certainly, if you're going to combine two embryos, mm. then yes, that's what you're going to do. But in, well, there in, are in, then in IVF, religi you combine, uh, you, you, you destroy well, embryos. How well, big a problem is that for you? There are two ways of doing it. Um, there is the spindle transfer mechanism, which only has one embryo but two eggs. And so, although there is an ethical issue surrounding the destruction of embryos, that is, I think, separate from the argument on mitochondrial transfer. What do you say, uh, Matt Rodillo, to people that say there hasn't actually been enough consultation and research? There have been safety um, trials and clinical trials conducted, but actually not for long enough, not to see, of course, um, what the consequences might be. I mean, we heard there from Dr. Tobel, you never make any procedure 100% safe. Mm. Do we need to wait a bit longer before we take this step? Well, I think the argument that we've rushed into something is kind of the last refuge uh, <laughs> when you've run out of other arguments. Uh, and if you look at this, it is not rushed. I mean, there's been seven years of debate over this. There were three different, very thorough scientific inquiries into all the possible things that might go wrong, that could go wrong, whether it's safe, whether it's efficacious, whether it's ethical. Right. I mean, what would you say to a family, though, Jacob, well, that in your constituency that says, look, we, we, we've got this problem, why should you play okay. God in this instance? I, I just want to agree with Lord Ridley first that it hasn't been rushed. We had a debate on this oh. in the House of Commons a year ago. It's not a question of safety. It's not a question of rushed. It's a question of the fundamental ethics, which is what I would say would it to, a to this family in this tragic and hard position that, that there are some lines that are of such fundamental importance to our understanding of humanity that they cannot be crossed. Do you think it is something that MPs should vote in favour for? I think they have to listen to, to all the arguments and, and I think you had a, 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 an exceptionally enlightening argument uh, uh, just now. Uh, I think it's a, a fantastically difficult one. I do. Can I reduce it to a different level? Matt in the Daily Telegraph today talking about three parent families um, and there's this guy walking along with his girlfriend and um, the girlfriend says, do you know, one of my three parents really likes you. On that, we'll leave it there. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.